Oh yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started then. All right. So good morning, everybody. Morning. Oh wow. Okay. So many people are coming in. I have to. I have to like balance hosting and and letting people come into the uh, all hands. But let's go ahead and get started. All right. So uh, thank you all for coming in this morning. Um, just a few things I'd like to say. So. Um, Anyways, I have a few announcements. Uh, for everybody who doesn't know, I'll be actually going back to the United States in uh, the end of this week. It's something I've been planning for a long time, and it's part of uh, part of my general mission. So my daughter is becoming of high school age, so I'll be bringing her back to California, where uh, I'm originally from, to study for junior high, and on to college, and then uh, on to high school, and then college. So I'm going to be away. But uh, I'll still be CEO of Book of Vista, of course, and I'll be working in uh, essentially a different time zone. It's something that we got used to we did this last year, around November. So, so anyways, that's, that's going to be a move. Uh, since most of our, our teams work remote anyways, I don't see this being uh, anything besides an extension of our current culture. So this is pretty cool. Um, another personal announcement. I'm going to be turning 40. It's Friday, so uh, I've, I've been on this earth for almost four decades now. That's a little bit intimidating in some ways, but hopefully also also uh, something good. So anyways, uh, we'll celebrate this Friday and do something fun for the entire company for my third year. Next, okay, uh, let's go into the weekly inspiration. So what I'd like to talk about is a little bit something about our business model, but it's also a little bit something I think is a cautionary tale. A lot of the inspiration stories we, we go over on the all hands, these stories tend to be of uh, things that you should do, right? Company or models that you can follow. I'd like to tell a little bit more of a, a tragic hero case, a cautionary tale, something that maybe is a little bit different, coming from a different perspective. So hopefully this will this will make some sense. Anyway, before I begin this story, I'd like to tell about our business model, which is sending hospitality services, hospitality management as a service. This idea is actually very fundamental, and I think it solves a problem, but I'll use an analogy from a different industry, from an industry that I grew up in, in the tech industry in Silicon Valley. So I'll begin with a fun fact, and let's take a look at this, uh, uh, this picture here. If you ever get a chance to, Menlo, to go to Menlo Park and visit the Facebook headquarters, you'll find this. This is the sign for Facebook at the very front of their office building. But what you might not know is that on that sign, on the back side, is this. And it's an old signboard saying Sun Microsystems on it. And you might wonder, why did Facebook actually keep the, um, the old sign there? And, and this is an interesting story that I'd like to, like to rig out everybody about. So what was Sun Microsystems and what were they doing? So Sun Microsystems was actually a really, really popular company back when I was growing up. It was founded by these four gentlemen one of which was a graduate from UC Berkeley, the same place I went to school. And they got together and they had this idea of creating networked computers. So these would be essentially what we normally call servers these days. So they, um, they experienced a very, very tremendous amount of growth. I remember driving past their one of their operations facilities in Silicon Valley on my way to school. And it would be like literally a four minute drive to go from one side to the other side of the, of the facility, and that's at highway speeds. So Sun was massive. So what, what was like the problem that they were trying to solve? Sun wanted to actually provide internet services. At the time, um, internet companies were growing booming. They were growing really quickly, and Sun would sell their servers to people who had websites, like uh, Yahoo, like Pets.com, like all these first dot-com generation companies. So as their, uh, as the internet companies kept on growing, Sun kept on selling more and more servers. So whenever somebody needed more capacity to handle their website traffic, um, they would lease a server, or they would buy a server from Sun. They would take the server, they would put it in a closet on site in their office buildings, and that's how they would grow their business. So um, they were selling this problem for a very long time, and as a result of that, they uh, they did very well. So this is a little bit of what product at Sun actually looked like: physical hardware servers that were put into closets 
that help websites run better. Now, here was the problem. Um, eventually, Sun went into this kind of phase. So they grew, they grew, they grew. But at a certain point, they stopped growing. And then at a certain point, they really started tumbling and becoming um, uh, not such a valuable company anymore, uh, not so innovative anymore. So what was the takeaway from that? Well, by this time, the problem had actually evolved. By this time, there were better servers on the market, and the model for doing the business had moved uh, away from actually purchasing your own servers to more renting services. So then what exactly happened? Well, if you think about it these days, if you want to create a blog or if you want to make a post on your Instagram, you don't really need to think about a server or how to actually create space and store images and do all this stuff. You, you just put it on Instagram. And then what does Instagram do? They buy their services from another company, um, or actually Instagram they don't, but let's say Airbnb or Dropbox, they would buy their services from another company. So what did that company start looking like? That company started looking like Amazon. So Amazon was the e-tailer, uh, online retailer. And they noticed that they had excess server capacity sitting around. Um, in their in their data centers, so they started renting out their servers to third-party companies. A lot of startups now they will have no hardware. They will not buy servers from a company like Ton or or Dell or whatever these server companies are. They will just simply buy services. So um, Amazon Web Services is now where the majority of us, when we search online for things, the actual hardware is in one of the Amazon data centers. So. This is actually a big shift in the, in, the, in the business model, and also it's a shift in how we perceive the problem. Now, how does that relate to actually Book and Vista? The thing that we do here at Book and Vista, and maybe not everyone has been aware of it, is that the hospitality industry is still using a model very similar to the way Sun works. They believe that the problem is when they need a service, they go and they buy somebody or a server to, to admit to, to solve that problem. So they'll look for a person or a thing to actually um, service that problem. But at Book and Vista, we rent our services. We rent services for property management. We rent things like managing people's data, managing their reviews, managing their customer support. So um, all these things that we do within the company are services. And we're taking on more of the model of business from Amazon Web Services and less like the model from Sun. So anyway, as a cautionary tale, I thought this was actually a good uh, way to introduce two things. One, it's this idea of uh, services are actually able to be sold on the internet, and that's something that can scale very well. And the second is uh, really this idea of the core value of never settle. That Sun was doing very, very well at one point. It became one of the, the most uh, desirable companies people who were coming in uh, from my industry were looking to work at. But nowadays, Sun doesn't exist. Some of their legacy software modules still exist. If you're a computer science major, you probably heard of the programming language Java. Well, that was actually one of Sun's products. And eventually they sold Java to another company called Oracle for, for some money. But that was the only thing that, that was left. Sun eventually, they, they couldn't pivot their business quickly enough from hardware to software. And they didn't see the, the writing on the wall for that matter. So I think it's important to just kind of remember two core values in this particular case, and then we can learn from Sun, which is you uh, need to never settle, right? Once you've done really well, I think in one particular category, it doesn't mean that your business will continue, because the problem will continue to change. And if you don't serve to actually address that problem well, your relevancy tends to decrease over time as a company. So that was one. The second is being the hero. Um, Sun did actually have internet services that they were running out at the time, very similar to Amazon. But for some reason, one reason or the other, none of those, um, none of those ideas actually got enough uh, courage put behind them to grow. So I think those are the two takeaways that I'd like to address today through the Sun story. One is never settle, and the second is be the hero, and also hopefully clarify a little bit more about our business model. Okay, without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to Bella, who will be our moderator for today. Okay, thank you, sir, for your inspiration. And we can move to the vision, vision statement. Back to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, I found this archive photo of all our, not all, but a significant number of our guest check-ins. And I thought this was actually a really good way to visualize 
mission statement of uh, inspiring life everywhere, every time, every month. So, anyways, these are just some of the, uh, the the daily work that we do. Actually, I put this back from the earlier days of checking in guests physically when we uh, didn't have COVID and social distancing. Mm -hmm. So this was it. Yeah, uh, I'll go on to the next one, and I'll give uh, I'll give Chris a run at the screen. So this is something I thought that was really innovative and pretty cool. So Chris has developed with the product team a tool that allows us to see where exactly our employees are located. So uh, we just kind of actually, this one was pretty fun, that Weira and Jocelyn are actually right next door to each other. So this is uh, this has been a really, really cool tool. Uh, Chris, are you there right now? Yes, sir. All right, Chris, would you like to demo the new, uh, uh, the new tool that we have? Okay, let me share my screen in a second. All right, good. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Uh, okay. So actually, this is the employee location map that Mr. Uh, Jin is just now. So this is the visualization. And we can see like in this map, you can see like there's 46 people in Southeast Asia, one in like Europe, and then like 15 in the US. Uh, so that's the funny thing about uh, people in the US. So let's, let's take a look first. So here we can see like 12 people are in the same thing, same spot, which is um, people who don't actually like uh, make the, or is it update the um, address in bigger, so it won't show in the map. But uh, let's see to the uh, Southeast Asia one. Well, we can see like in each uh, state, um, there's some people, and we can actually like see um, several people on there as well. Uh, so if we see like in Pontiana, for example, in Kalimantan um, Barat, here's me, uh, Chris Bukivista with uh, the full address and also there are two more people uh, here which is Iran and David it's actually like pretty, yeah actually pretty close here and it's just like a uh, few blocks away from uh, and then uh, we can also see lots of like another stuff like in Java for example in Jakarta, there's 11 people, and we can like track one each of them, like who, who are them, and so on and so forth. And here it is. Actually, that's it. And this can be used to a lot of stuff, actually. This is the beginning of we are using the visualization. And um, uh, actually, the initial idea from Mr. Jin at that time is like, um, we want to... Um, have the visualization on how to um, see actually to visualize things uh, our address so we can um, spot what is it where is people and we can like maybe do some gatherings to alumni and so on and so forth and also um, if we want to like uh, gather some tasks and so on for other people in that specific area we can also do that as well Probably that's it from me and from my demo. We'll be back to you, Mr. Jin. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. So as Chris mentioned, I think this tool has a lot of practical applications from an HR perspective, but also just from a, a way for us to feel a little bit more connected to each other, right? So if you happen to live in the same neighborhood, well, now you'll know. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's actually good to see from like the, the growth of Booker Vista across the country as well. And uh, from that, I think we can come up with some innovative ideas on how we can extend our culture to offline as well as online. Thank you very much, Chris, for that update and the innovation. Is there anybody that you'd like to uh, mention for delivering this, uh, this new feature? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, anybody that you'd like to mention, Chris, for delivering this new feature? Uh, probably to uh, Kofi D, who helped me a lot with the visualization as well. And also the idea about this and the possibilities actually to uh, use this for another user funnel and also actually like to visualize our properties uh, as well in the future. So uh, the implementation is a lot here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. All right, next, let's go to Lilith. Lilith has mentioned a project that they've been working on over in the community. 
So Lilith, I'll bring you up to present. Okay, uh, thank you very much, sir. So for this one, uh, I'd like to recognize community team uh, for actually understanding the mission of uh, positively transform our partner. Uh, so uh, back in uh, back in February 2021, uh, Tendi and I doing discussion on uh, what's the program that actually might transform our partner. So we come up with an idea of property quality control. We, I think we don't really have a good structure of this program yet before. Uh, so then we step up and try to execute this idea. Um, although there is pandemic, then we went to the field to do the property quality control. Uh, and then the partner seems very happy when we come to check their quality of property. That's the example of uh, some of the action that then we do. And after the PPKM policy by the government, then we uh, innovate again to do the online inspection uh, with all the uh, area manager in community. And then uh, we also can run the property quality control program, although we are not coming to uh, the property. So uh, I think that's one example of how we, under we, we truly understand the mission of transforming our user uh, in this example is the partner. So uh, I would like to congratulate the team to run this as a routine program in community. And uh, there's so many positive feedback from the partner. And of course, they want this program to uh, improve and also uh, run uh, as what we have done. Yeah, uh, I think that's all from me. Uh, back to Mr. Ting. Okay, thank you very much, Lois. Yes, I agree. That looks like a perfect representation actually how we innovate towards a particular mission here at the company that uh, despite Pipic IM, we're still able to be agile and work our way around this particular challenge and keep to our commitment to transforming partners. Okay, great. Let's keep on going. Next, let's uh, okay, I'll pass it over to Bella again. Okay, now we move to weekly uh, inspiration and then uh, please Andre for the innovation is Kandre here yep maybe I'll wait for Andre uh Andre okay. may, may, may have lagging in his uh, because of the box, but uh, this is an example of a uh, guest that uh, we inspired to leave review uh, using the previous system that we had, uh, created and adopted, and it's still going on until right now. It improves our review conversion rate by a lot by having quote, like by following up the guests. And uh, just as you've seen here, the guest is actually really delighted to have our uh, hospitality by HR team. Uh, and that's the, the review that uh, she left is shown in the second image. Yep, so uh, that's, that's that, I guess, for the weekly inspiration from HR. Okay, thank you, Mavini. Uh, we can move to innovation from our partners. Please, to Katemi. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Bella. Uh, the first one, uh, I would like to mention the community sharing session with Region 1. Yeah, we talk about the partner feedback uh, for BP service and then also it was fun to sharing with the partner and then uh, Pak Freddy from Jakarta is uh, knowing uh, Pak Agus from Bali and then they sharing and Pak Agus sharing about the their idea for the on-the-job on the job training and then Pak Freddy is very happy if they can uh, get that program as well to help uh, their staff uh, for uh, King the Villa and then like yeah, it was fun and then we will continue this uh, program in community. And then the second one is, uh, this is the, oh yeah, this is after the feedback from the, uh, from the guests and then I forwarded to uh, Boot DC and uh, for the, uh, what's called suggestion and recommendation to make a fans and then go, uh, DC is uh, very happy to, to, uh, to receive my feedback and then also uh, she 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 just uh, implement the the uh, my feedback to make a fans of uh, like a permanent permanent fans like that. Back to Bella. Okay, thank you, Katendi, for your updates, and then we can move to innovation from uh, Ross. I think 
Mm, okay. Good morning, everyone. So we also uh, have community sharing session with Region Empat, uh, Region Four, Nusa Penida. And one of the interesting things shared by the partner was about uh, motivation of the guests in general to Nusa Penida was like it turns out that the motivation of tourists to Nusa Penida is more to go for travel and yeah, sorry for not for war. The four partners uh community uh, management team and Mikhail discussed the promising strategy of traveling experience in Nusa Penida where they can stay at the properties at Bukit, Bukit Pista Nusa Penida partners and as the Dega said because if we only promote lodging guests are less interested but if we promote travel package as the main menu and include accommodation for partners they are more interested And I share this this session to Nusa Penida Community WhatsApp group, and one of our partners uh, respond to it and yeah, just share about his opinion too. Thanks, Bella. Okay. Okay. I got insight from Ross, and we can move to uh, from our employee. Please to Kaara. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Bella. So from the employee side, I've been looking at three, three things, main things here. First, from the finance team. So finally, we got project that make three of us as financial analysts can work together and we make a change on job description that we think more relevant. Gather finder for full stack and placing financial record. And then the second one, um, sorry, sorry. Uh, second one is that get more opportunities to be the speakers in university webinars or guest lectures and manage Lots of partnerships meeting with our team. This is also related to CTOP, the number 22, together with community team. Add university partners logo on the website too. So this is also related to Amelia. And then the last part is, this is related to PD and HR. Communication channel on bigger booking details now have options for all air support, WhatsApp, which gives more clarity to the HR team. So thank you to PD for helping me and working together with the HR team. Back to you, Bella. Okay, thank you, Kara, for your update. And then we can move to technological innovation to Kofidi, please. Right, thank you very much for the uh, technology innovation. Uh, previously, we have tracking for employees and also inquiries and uh, other things. So now we extended the innovation to the finance uh, department so that we can kind of like ease the process of creating an income statement and make everything more uh, standardized. Okay, and then thank you for video. We can move to Nadia. Okay, hello, good morning, everyone. So, yeah, I would like to inform that we have a live chat feature now on our website, which is currently, uh, which is now available and then will be like handled by the marketing agent and BDK as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kanadia. And then for, oh, this is an update for me and uh, for this update, I think it's still on progress for a table so we can move uh, our database from Trello. We will make like centralized database management to uh, like assembly all data to all of our chapters. Okay, that's all for me. And then, yes, we can uh, continue to I think there's no update from HR because it's still the first week, right? Okay. Um, I'd like to pass this to RV actually. Okay. Please, Carvi. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Yes, um, we are currently um, in the period of filling the ES. And in, this is actually the last day to fill the ES. Don't forget to fill it before um, three PM with that um, to help HR understand better about your chapter and our programs as well. Okay, thank you, Kaafi, for your announcement. Okay. Okay, over back to you, Mr. Jim. All right, so I'm going to quickly do this because we have a lot of new people in the room. I see we're up to 57. Uh, souls in the, in the Google Meet. So this is the company, Mapshead, and this is a statement of some of the visions that we have here for the district. 
So I'll pass it to each of the chapter leads and we can announce the mission so that everyone's clear what the purpose of their chapters are. So for leadership, um, the purpose is to lead the mission to positive transform our guests, employees, and partners through hospitality innovations. For HR, uh, our mission is to improve continuously our speed and accuracy of hires. And we do that through getting the greatest professional network for hospitality innovation. Our second mission is to build innovation culture that leads the global hospitality industry. For marketing, I'm going to turn it over to Rizal. Rizal, what is the mission of marketing? Okay, thank you, sir. For marketing is to uh, discover, uh, to discover and acquire delightful properties that anchor inspirational uh, guest experiences. Excellent. Let's go over next to Andre or Vidi. Or wait, is Andre here? Uh, let's go to Vidi. Vidi, the yep. HR. For HR, we aim for super hosting a skill, meaning our Pocket Business mission is to inspire delight through hospitality innovation that positively transform our guests. Thank you very much. Next, over to community. I'll go to Lilith for the announcement of the mission there. Okay, so for community, uh, actually, it's actually changed. Uh, the mission of the community uh, to maintain our partner through transformation and then to um, to improve the partner growth by the BD team, actually. But for this one, leading our property community to deliver inspirational guest experience to hospitality innovation, that's actually a larger scale for, for our mission. Okay, perfect. All right. Any changes on the mission? Make sure we update it here. That's all good. Yeah, sure, sure. Then Thank you. Over to BI. BI, is, is the mission BI the same? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Accelerate revenue growth for best total portfolio of properties. Yes, that's still the same. Uh, top of market performance of our distribution platform. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. And Bayu, what is the mission of product? It's uh, inspiring the hospitality industry through technology for innovation. All right, perfect. Okay, so all the newbies and the people who've been here, that's what we do for each chapter. Next, uh, I'll pass it back to Bella. Okay, thank you, Ms. Project, and then we can move to chapter main achievement. Uh, we will start from community. Please, Katandi. Okay, yeah, thank you, Bella. Uh, yeah, for in community, uh, that's a community sharing session with Region 1 and 4, and also BPC Talk with ADS Jogja Interior. Thank you, Bella. Okay, great, Katandi. And then we move to HAR. Uh, Andre? Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ella, for the chance. So, here's the update from HR. So, new HR workshop by Gray will start, uh, start discussing, uh, start the discussing hosting practice uh, to increase hosting service and also the practice better. And the second one. Uh, HR, we are currently open for anyone who is interested in HR works and want to try some. If you are maybe curious about how HR handling the guests, handling the finance, and the reservation, you can join us. And what the different benefit if you join the HR? Of course, you will have hospitality knowledge more, and then you will have also communication skills that you might try and increase as well. And last one is you will hang out on Discord with the HR team as well. So you'll be very much having fun with the guests and also with the team. So if you guys interested, you can join the HR. Absolutely, HR stars. Okay. Interesting. Okay, next to HR, please to Kai Shialin. Okay, thank you, Bella. So um, for the past week, so on Jenna's intern graduation presentation, we had special guests actually. We had her um, career center officers from like, NTU, as well as IPB lecturer as the guest for her presentation. So this is going to be the next evolution for future intern presentations. And yeah, special mention to Furkan actually for starting these initiatives and having like um like our guests like attending this so that they can get an overview on what internship in the company look like. So yes, um that's all and back to you, Bella. Okay, thank you, Kashelin, and then we will move from TD to Kabayu. Okay, so the bit uh, for this week uh, is we are onboarding uh, Stefan. Uh, so welcome, Stefan. Uh, basically, uh, he's uh, officially starting his internship as quality assurance uh, intern, and he uh, will be making sure that all of our tools are satisfactory to the users. All the product, all the features that we are creating is actually having impact for the user. So please expect uh, pairing, surveys, and improvement from him. 
Okay, thank you Kawayu for the update and then for the last eh no for the marketing to Kariza. Yep, thank you Bella. For marketing is uh, we splitting the marketing for our guests and partners to basically uh, more focus uh, supporting the new partners and also uh, new guests. Okay, thank you for your update, Karizal. And for the last, from the eye to Kalilis, please. Thank you, Bella. So, kudos to Patricia, Kevin, Manasa, Dila, Anix, Felix, Bella, and Elvina for creating the online assessment for each role. So, uh, our selection process will be uh, more tight right now. Yeah, back to Bella. Thank you. Thank you, Kalilis. Okay, I think we uh, passed the time target. Uh, back to upside, sir. Okay, so we have oh the theme, the theme. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. Um, it's me, PD again, and we are starting our um new month, August twenty twenty one, with a new team related to what Mr. Jing uh just shared to us on her on his uh so in weekly inspiration. So our current uh, team is the creation of an artist, the mind of an inventor. Uh, celebrities follows what's popular, where artists manifest their idea into reality as they see fit. We are a data-driven company, and that's good, and that's true. In the past months, we have improved a lot in reading and also responding to the change in demand. Uh, but now, let's try to learn how an artist's mind works, the courage to step out of our, cons uh, of our comfort zone and also become inventors. Uh, working side by side to create data and forge a path that reflects our company's bigger vision because data do not come from experiments. Uh, so I want you guys to keep that in mind. I will help you guys with my full capacity. And in return, I would like to ask each individual of you to also help me to create this, uh, uh, to, to like achieve the company's vision. So going for to the first user funnel, we have the uh, we have the partnership user funnel, uh, six months goal of transforming 50 partnerships. And based on the updates from community on the partner transformation, we have an additional six partners jumping from the transactional partnership to relationship partnership, and also 16 partners from relationship to legacy partnerships. So in total, we have 67 partners transformed, uh, which are at 34%, uh, more than our uh, target of 50 partners transformed. So kudos to the partnership team, uh, the marketing and also community team, uh, which includes community management and also business development. So big uh, round of applause. Um, for now, we still have one month, and I would like to ask the partnership team to continue their uh, good work in the partnership funnel. And next, we'll move on to the guest funnel. We have a new uh, revenue target uh, for 43,000. Uh, so this is minus 20,000 compared to the initial revenue target from last month. But if you look at the revenue we, that we achieved last month, we are stuck at 41,552 for three weeks. So team, uh, we, we faced a huge wave and we are still uh, in the face of facing an, uh, like this, this big wave. And there are two options in this case. We can, um, we can get shipwrecked basically, or we can ride the wave. And I think as a company, we have the capability to do the latter. We can ride the wave. So we will continue to innovate and strategize um, with the current Amande team as well to achieve, uh, to gain more revenue. We start uh, uh, on August at 22,476 with an in-month revenue of 1,573. And our current target, uh, if we, uh, let's remember that is 40,000 with an extend, uh, extended uh, extend the target of uh, 50,000. So that's 60.12%. Uh, and I would like to um, ask the help from the guest panel for this one from BI and also HR team as well as marketing team from the, in the top, top panel. Okay, uh, that's the update from me. Uh, Bella, back to Bella. Oh, Bella, can I say something? Okay, congratulations, everybody. We have been working on this partnership goal for the past six months. So we set a North Star goal of 50. We've reached 67. So that is a huge achievement. We went over our expected um, uh, target. And I think this is possible because the company has worked really hard together to get every part right. right? So the HR team is going out to make sure that guests are happy and they leave reviews. That keeps the partners happy. The community team is doing 
all they can to transform partners. HR is helping to provide uh, new employees, new interns to help with the process. Product is helping with creating easier processes, making things more manageable with the, uh, with the teams that we have. So um, every chapter, HR, product, uh, marketing, um, community, HR, uh, BI, have all worked tirelessly together to create this achievement. So I'm very happy to see that we got that. And the month isn't even finished yet. So that, for our long-term goal, is, is great. Uh, Vidi, also I like your analogy about the shipwreck. I think we do have choices in how we respond to uh, what's happening around us. And let's choose to surf the wave in Vidi's analogy. Congratulations, everybody, for the past six months. Okay, congrats, everyone, for our achievement for this month. And then we can move to the next, se next session about the personal updates. Okay, um, I will read from for Omra Fix since is not here. Uh, the favorite tradition is Ogogo Festival, which is celebrate New Year Eve of Belenese New Year. And then we can move to Katendi. Please, Katendi. Okay, thank you, Bella. So, yeah, the, uh, the, my favorite uh, event is the Bukti Pista celebration. Actually, that's uh, very fun. And then it's like um, really release your uh, stress out and tired after you meeting all the team and then celebrate together. And then we are also not celebrate uh, only in uh, my team and company, but we also sharing uh, with the local community, with the people that needs uh, something uh, to fix them as well. And then yeah, I think it's very fun and then meaningful for me. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, Katendi, for your update, and then we will move to Kaasa from community. Okay, so for me, is it is Ngayok Jazz. It is an annual event where you can hear just, um, jazz music combined with local culture. And not only hear music, you can also hunt for culinary and souvenirs. And I really miss going there, even though I'm not really a jazz listener. I just like to enjoy the music. Thanks again, Bella. Okay, thank you. Kasa, and then we will next to Ross. Okay. Uh, cultural festival of all tribes, both in Indonesia and the world. Because through the festival, I can get to know their identity, values, and philosophy of life that they hold. Some of the festival that I have witnessed is uh, Batak uh, Tribal Festival on like. Balik and the Osing Tribal Festival in Kemiran Cilek Banyuwangi and also Sumba Festival. Okay, thank you, Ros, for your update, and then we can move to Felicia. Please, Felicia. Thank you, Bella, and good morning, everyone. So my favorite tradition slash festival would be Christmas because I can gather with my friends and have barbecue parties, and that's pretty much super duper fun for me. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Bella. Thank you, Felicia. Okay, we can move to Mokwena, please. Okay, from me, like personally, like, in Bali, this culture, I like the nyepi, but uh, I have a dream uh, place that I want to celebrate is Burning Man. I think it's cool. I haven't made it there, but I tend to feel something crazy that the people that are going to meet. Okay, such a good picture. Thank you, Mokwena. We can move to Nadine. Okay, thank you, Bella. So my favorite uh, celebration is actually Christmas, but uh, I like all the celebration that we see does. So, like this is one of the Christmas celebration we had like in the past two years. I think with Sarah, Riza, and also the former intern Alvina. Back to you, Bella. Thank you, Canadian. Okay, and then next, please, first of all. Okay, okay. Uh, I will read for four hour because this is not working. Uh, she likes Independence Day celebration because yeah, uh, she likes to decorate the bike. And then we can move to Andreas from Bibi. Okay, I think this not here. And then we can move to uh, Kaiwa. I will read also. Uh, she likes Chap Gome from Chinese New Year celebration. And then we can move to the next one from Andre from HAI. Please, 
Chandler. Thank you, Bella. So it's me again, guys. Uh, I love Kraton Yogyakarta Animal Karawitan. It was like a traditional music from from Java. And I was once also teaching Karawitan in my college as well. So this is what I was doing when I was doing that uh, animal Karawitan in Kraton Yogyakarta. Okay, thank you for your update, Kak Andre, and then we will move to Kak Sasha. Yep, uh, thank you, Bella. So my favorite uh, festival would be Chinese New Year. Uh, I love the family gathering, pops, or red envelopes, and we have lots of food as well. So that's pretty much it. Thank you, Bella. Thank you. Thank you for your update, Kak Sasha, and we will move to Kak Gray. She's not here, but she likes uh, New Year. Yep. We will next to Kadipta. So, of course, the most popular festival ceremony I like is the Balinus Pengukupan Pengukupandi, which is the day before the new pee. You, the, the, the village will perish our giant Balinus mythology around the city. So that's the most I like. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karipta, for your update. And then we will move to Ka Erika. Thank you, Bella. So my favorite celebration is eight because uh, I'm sweet tooth, and uh, during eight, usually there's a lot of uh, food like cookies that my mom made, or from my aunt, or sometimes I help my mom make the cookies. So yeah, thank you, Bella. Thank you, Karika. And then we will move to you, Mr. Jim. All right. Of course, my favorite festival is Mardi Gras because it's a two-week-long festival, and there's lots of street parades. There are billions of beads. There's happy people. A lot of uh, public celebrations. So this is uh, this is one draw picture, and this is another one draw picture. Okay, such a great moment. We will move to uh, Kara. Thank you, Mr. Jin. Okay, thank you. Yeah, mine is Halloween. Basically, I don't know, no one mentioned it yet, but this is like Halloween on with Bukit Vista theme in the past few years. So yeah, that's my favorite festival. Okay, for the next one. Thank you, Clara. We can move to Kashilin. Uh, okay, thank you, Bella. So, uh, one of my favorite is actually Qingming Festival. I'm not sure if like, everyone is aware of this. So, we visit our ancestors' grave and then pay respect to them. It's kind of like reminding us again of where we came from and then be grateful to our grand grandparents who came like all the way to a foreign area and started my new life. That's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, it wasn't actually like an easy choice to make at that time. Oh, yeah. That's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kashali, and we move to Karki. Yes, my favorite festival would be the New Year. In Jakarta, it's pretty beautiful, the fireworks. And yeah, um, it's nice to stay uh, late. Okay, thank you, Karki. And then, please, Kavera. Okay, thank you. So, my favorite tradition is the Tong. Pongtu or Winter Solstice Festival, so it's actually the tradition where we celebrate the arrival of spring. And the night before the day, usually the whole family usually gather together and make tang yen, or in Indo, it's actually on the on day, and joke around. And mom's tang yen is actually like super resistant. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pavera. We will move to Thailand. Okay, thank you, Bella. So, my favorite uh, festival is Pyeongnapsuri which it is a religious ceremony to appease the gods, to keep away from natural disasters and uh, the kind of bad things. And I've seen it when I went to Kyoto and lots of people in wear traditional clothes and carrying the clothes. It's very crowded. Thank you, Bella. Okay, thank you, Kyren. And then for Kazukun, it's like eight celebrations in S. Kairika. And then we move to Kalita from the R. Okay, so my favorite tradition is probably Obogo in Bali. Thank you, Lalita. And then we move to Shumian. Hello, yeah. So uh, for myself, it is Chinese New Year. It's like a me on my relatives, especially like aunts and uncles. It's like, you know, seeing me grow up. And yeah, seeing them well and just talking about past memories to tell about eating home cooked food. It's a really like joyful, yeah, happy event. Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you, Bella. Okay, thank you, Kashimin. And then we will move to Latifa. 
Okay, uh, my favorite one is Indonesian Independence Day because uh, in that time we play a lot of games and all of the places decorated with a uh, red and white flag. Yeah, back to you, Bella. Thank you, Latifa. And then we will move to Ekin, please. Yeah, thank you, Bella. My favorite is New Year's because me and two of my closest friends always meet for New Year's no matter where we are. Uh, we all live in different cities and one is in a different country actually, but we always manage to meet for New Year's since 2013 with the exception of 2021. Thank you. Thank you. And then we will move to Kabayu. Please, Kabayu. Hello, Kabayu. Okay. I will read for you. Uh, how about you like Jogja Festival, like Najoyas, FKY, and Nadal. <laughs> and then we will move to Canada. From All right. Thank you. So my favorite festival is Dia de San Jordi. It's actually a rose and um, book festival in Canada. Thank you. Thank you, Canada. And then from Chris. Oh, for me, it's actually New Year's celebration. I spend my time with my friends, actually. Back to you, Bella. Thank you, Kakris. And the next one is from Jay. Uh, he likes to give blessing of independence celebration. And then next one from Amelia. She likes Chinese New Year and Mid Autumn Festival. And then from Stephen. Uh, okay, so I really do like Christmas this time with uh, all with those Christmas songs from the kids from the tree to and person under the tree. And you were still an innocent people believe in the existence of Santa Claus. And those are the eight places. Back to you there. Okay, thank you for your updates. And then we move to Carrizo. Okay, uh, for me it's uh, Galungan and also Kuningan because in this day I will wear a uh, Balinese coat, uh, traditional clothes. Yeah, back to you there. <laughs> thank you, Carrizo. And then can Danny please? Okay, fine. My favorite is Festival Kesenian Yogyakarta. Yep. Good one. And then, thank you, Karyani. We will move to Audrey. Uh, yes, thank you, Bella. For me, it's probably Indofiti because nobody can be that much cooked food. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then to Zaki. Yeah, um, thank you, Bella. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in order to Audrey, actually, uh, my favorite is also Edo PK because I do uh, Mudik. I get to meet my distant families in Samarang. Uh, I do very good and also get some THR or Ampau or money. Okay, back to you, Bella. Okay, thank you, Zaki. And then for Sharon, she's not here. Uh, she likes Christmas and Chinese New Year. And then to Erika, please. And the next one is from Kalilis. Please, Kalilis. Thank you. So, uh, first, we have a section Bali, PKB, many inspirational works, uh, and plus my relationship in person. Oh, oh, so sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Kalilis, for your update. Okay, we can move to Kobidi. I like all oh. extra seven times. We <laughs> <laughs> also have been Kulai at Kobidi. <laughs> okay, next one from Kat David. Yeah, hello Bella, hello everyone. Uh, for me, it's Christmas and New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Kat David. And then for Khalif, uh, he likes Reza Clatron Festival. And then we can move to Kevin. Okay, thank you, Bella. I like the Chinese New Year, yeah, the reason. <laughs> Okay, thank you for your update, Kevin. And then we will move to Vera. Uh, thank you, Ben. So I guess my favorite festival will be the Hungry Boys Festival because um at night um everyone will be at home, so when I go out, it will be less crowded. And also, it's like it adds to the spooky factor when you go on um, the urban exploring. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Vera. And then for Alfina, she likes Chinese New Year. 
And then the next one is Manasa, please. Thank you, Dana. Um, so my favorite is actually Halloween. Um, there's no specific reason why, but um, it, it's been my favorite since I've gone after my first trick or treating trip when I was eight. And ever since then, I've made a personal path sort of to do something for Halloween. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Manasa. And the next one for Patricia. She likes Christmas. And then from Hakim, he likes at celebration. And then for Michael, please, Michael. Then so. For the question is Lunar New Year or Chinese New Year for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Michael. And then we can move to Anish. She likes a celebration also. And then for Dila. Please, Dila. Yeah, uh, I celebrate birthday celebration. It's important for people to say thank you for being worth it. So I don't know this person or not, but yeah, just talk to me that way. Thank you. Thank you, Rana. <laughs> Thank you, Dila, for your updates. And then for me, I like uh, Christmas and Chinese New Year. And then we can move to Felix. Yeah, so my favorite tradition slash festival is uh, the Rai Festival in Liyue. It's a fictional festival. Every single beast, no matter how small, is worth seeing the creature. Okay, thank you, Felix, for your updates. And then we can move to Anthony. Okay, I will read for you. Uh, he likes when Bloom Festival in Monstrum because it's so fun. And then we can move to Fatia. Uh, so for me, I think it's Christmas because it's a holiday season. And it's fun. Okay, thank you for your updates. And then we move to Jocelyn. Uh, my favorite festival is uh, Christmas because I can have the time to get up with my family and friends over dinner. And then also church and mall looks more beautiful during the holiday season. Thank you, Dr. Yala. Thank you for your updates. And then from Vera. Uh, so my favorite festival would be Chinese New Year because I got to meet lots of relatives and family and also get angpao, get more money. And usually in Chinese New Year, there's a lot of great food. So yeah, thank you, Bella. Okay, thank you for your updates. And then we will move to announcement because uh, Arfi has additional information for us. Please, Arfi. Yes, thank you again, Bella. So, um, Azure has announcements for the 101 that has uh, been finished for the session, but we are trying to follow up. So, there are a few issues that uh, we see happening in the company, and we look forward to following it up. In the company wide, we have engagement. So we are looking forward to improve our happy hour. And we would like everyone to know that we have all hands commenting. Um, and also in the session, we have chat box as well. So we would like to encourage you guys to actually participate um, and feel the engagement there. And also for appreciation, um, we would encourage everyone to do journaling or um, put more um, your effort in the personal update because it will um, it will help you to journal what um, you have done good and what you need to um, improve. And then for the expectation, um, we would encourage everyone to actually communicate your expectation to your leaders, to your peers, and to yourself. And if you are um, not sure about your own expectations, then you can go to time with um, human resource in our office hour. Then um, we will help you with it. Now for the chapter Y, um, at the moment, Kaara is being the doctor for um, the marketing team. We're happy to see improvements in marketing. Um, and yeah, um, Kaara will um, follow up again and then for the individual um, ones um, we have several um, things mentioned but since the root cause is different for everyone then um, we're trying to have personalized approach for everyone and then um, i would like to remind everyone that hr is here so if you need us um, to help you with anything regarding your um, employment, engagement, um, internship, 
um, basically um, anything that will help you to grow in the company, then um, you can book a time, office hour to Shelin or to Kaara. And then, um, yeah, I would um, like to remind everyone once again to fill out the EES by today, 3 p.m. later. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carfi, for the announcement. And then we can move to our fellow recognition. Okay, for the first one, we will start from wait, 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 July 29th from Gina. I will read for her to Tavera. On several occasions, there are times whereby I consult with Tavera to help, and she was always more than delighted to help a helping hand to me and believe to others as well. When I was preparing for my AGP, I have trouble with my with the design of the slide, and also we load a lot mainly her telling me things like, "Oh my God, Jenna, your IUX cannot make it," and jokes around. Uh, the end product was amazing, not just for that, but even for other small things, such as uh, copywriting. She was also keen to help me because I had little experience. Yet. Thank you, Vera. Thank you, Vera. And then we will move to the next one from Jenna. This is a little overview, but it is mainly about the June PES deck. Then when I was feeling overwhelmed and stressed, when I talked to Shumin about the troubles I'm facing, you would be surprised at how much Shumin really knows a lot and puts in a lot of efforts to help you out upon healing your troubles. I was honestly surprised myself because back then I was kind of just ranting but after I saw how my problem she took no hesitation and when I had to help me out in whatever way possible within her capabilities and I would like to thank you for that. Thank you, Shaman. And then we will next to Kara, please Kara. Okay, thank you, Bella. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, hello, person I'd like to recognize first is Aira Malatifa Nalita. We missed the first chance to get the MBA Administrative Partnerships running with the government. But the team able to commit on the recovery plan and it's already been started. Hope all will go well with the right setup on the objective and key results. The next one is about help others to help themselves. This is credit to Akin who is working together with me on the happy hour refinement. This is her first time to actually do the refinement and this is a separate project but with the purpose and impact of the company wide. And then the next one over to Vera. Vera is up for the challenge to set up the game specifically on her leadership skill. She took the step to lead the middle funnel. So this is for being the hero. Yeah, back to you, Bella. Okay, thank you, Kaara. And then to Andre. Okay, I think uh, Andre is back in. Uh, the recognition is for Kashasha that about a discussion about review and she is the manager for review management, and it becomes well. And then next to Kohidi. Yeah, but it's a bit over here. So, but this is a core value recognition for Myra. She's not here with us anymore, but she um, agreed to extend her contract to her uh, until Erika on board. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Kohidi, for your update. And then from Nadine. Okay, thank you, Bella. So this is a uh, cordial recognition for the first time. Uh, I was the person that always open to any chance and opportunity that I uh, know so far, and she stepped up to be the champion of the LS Pitch project in BD. And she finished the first version of it and get the feedback from the team and improve it, and now we have the second version for passing. Thank you, Chris Bell. Thank you, Canadian. And then we will move to Kagami. Yep, thank you, uh, Bella. So I will nominate Aldre for Never Settle. Uh, Aldre step up from not only doing online canvassing but also doing approach the leads as well. He thinks that if that if one person doing canvassing and continue to next next stage, it will improve the efficiency of uh, the conversion. That's truly spirit of Never Settle. Yep. Okay, thank you, Kagani. And then we will move to the next one from Harizal. Okay, thank you, Bella. So, uh, the, I, I recognize Azaki for be the hero and never settle. Uh, so, we fi finally, we finished to set up the cool event in Google Analytics. Uh, it will help uh, us to see the data visibility in uh, website to set the KPI. 
Uh, kudos to you, Zaki, for working on this. Okay, thank you, Karizal, for your updates. And then for the last one, from Kalilis. Yeah, I would also uh, like to thank Ali for extending the internship like about one week, I think. Uh, to wait for Batya or Faya to uh, delegate the Instagram campaign. And we want you to extend more, Ali. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kailis, for your updates. And that's all from me. Back to you, Mr. Jim. Okay, thank you, everybody. And uh, yes, in particular, I really like to see this uh, this pattern of intern extension. That always reminds me in the early days of when we had guests extend at our properties, and then that was the biggest flattery that, that they really enjoyed our stay with us. All right, so we have a very exciting month coming up ahead. August is typically our peak season. Um, this year, unfortunately, because of Tepe Kayan, we don't expect peak season to come in terms of guests, but we do expect to actually create, as Vinny said, new strategies, new ways of dealing with this new wave that has occurred to us, right? And um, I'm going to be crossing over in a big chapter in my life, and I hope that this month can be trans uh, transformational for everybody else involved through innovative and uh, great collaborative teamwork that inspires the light. Okay, have a great week, everyone, and uh, yeah, don't stop inspiring the light. Go out there and change the world. See ya. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.